Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Simple Art for Adults. My name's Erin, and we are going to go back to our Romantic Country Color Along today. Um, I have moved my light source, so it's kind of in front of me, and this is going to give me fewer shadows, but the problem is, is that you might notice, like, little shiny spots where it washes out. Don't worry, it's not, um, it's not anything terrible. It won't look like that on your paper, so don't, don't panic if you see where it looks a little, a little shiny. All right, so what we did last time in the first part of our color along is we went ahead and we did the walls and we did the baseboard down here and we added some shadows back underneath uh, the desk. So today what I wanted to do is go ahead and get the floor done. And the two colors that we used to do the wall were the seashell pink, which is PC 1093, and the beige sienna, which is PC 1080. Now for the floor, we're going to take a little bit of a different approach, and we're actually going to use um, rosy beige, which is PC 1019 for our lighter color, and clay rose, which is PC 1017 for our darker shadowy color. Um, so as always, basically what I'm going to do is move my paper so you can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to take my uh, pencil and I'm going to start putting down the lighter color and I'm going to use a really light layer at first and this is a big area so I'm not going to zoom in on it too far because then I'll just have to move things around more so I'm kind of coloring with the side of my pencil just to get a nice light layer down and then when I when I, once I finish this part I'll go back in and put the shadows where I want them and then we'll come in and, and go heavier. Holding my pencil back and kind of turning it while I'm coloring. And if I do that while I use the side of the pencil, what happens is, is it helps me keep this really super sharp tip and I don't have to take it to the sharpener again. Now the color may not be even, it might not go down evenly, but that's okay. We're gonna do the same thing that we did with the walls. We're gonna come back in with a heavy layer once we have everything where we want it. So if you see pencil strokes or something like that starting out, don't, don't worry too much. You haven't ruined anything. And then I can use that sharp edge that I've kept to get in these littler spaces. So the next step in the process is going to be choosing some other colors for everything else in the room. And I haven't decided if I want to keep um, the desk and the bed like traditional furniture colors or if I want to brighten those up a little bit and go with like painted furniture. I can't decide yet. So we have this little corner over there that's going to be the floor. And then this looks like the backpack here. So it was brought to my attention in a YouTube comment that that is a backpack. So we are going to color it as such. Actually, it was an email I received, I believe, from Krista, who emailed me and said that that's a backpack. And if I looked on another page, maybe the next page. Yep, there it is. See? See your backpack right there? That's what that is. So thank you so much for emailing me and bringing that to my attention. I don't notice things like that. So we'll leave that alone. And again, you guys may not be seeing this color really bright and that's okay if you're not, you will soon. At this point, I just want to know where my shadows need to be. Again, this is Rosy Beige PC 1019. This brings me greater appreciation for coloring books where the picture doesn't go all the way to the very, very end. It's kind of hard to get all the way up to the edge because then your pencil grabs the paper and it wants to move it around. Okay, 
So there's just like our very, very light base layer on the floor. So again, we're going to consider our light sources. We have this lantern up here, um, but because it's not the only light source in the room, it's not going to shine like a huge light. So we don't really have to worry about that. Um, really all we're going to do is we're going to keep this little light spot here and that's it. That's really all this lantern's going to do. This is a daytime scene for me because like I said, you can see the clouds in the sky. So you're going to have some light coming into the room this direction towards us, which means that underneath the desk here and right here, just like under the bedpost in front of it and perhaps up here in front of the, um, the suitcase and the backpack, these are going to be a little darker. So at that point, I'm going to take my um, darker color, which is clay rose, and I'm going to go ahead and start over here and start putting in some of those shadows. Now you could also use a gray, um, you could use the um, complementary color of whatever um, that particular color would be. I'm not real sure. I'd have to look on my color wheel, and I do have it, so I can look it. I can look it up. Um, at this point, though, I think because we're using the Prismacolor 150, it's just easier to choose the color in the same family that's just darker. So there's the shadow for those bags. And we're, we're going to have to come in again and darken that up because we're going to come in and do a much darker layer with our, <clears throat> excuse me, with our rosy beige. Then we're going to have the under the desk shadowed. I don't want to carry that shadow out too far. This is all going to be in shadow, so I can go ahead and go in a little heavier here. And we can go ahead and pull this down. you guys hear some noises in the background, my dryer is running. It's, um, it's been really cold. I think it's been really cold in most of the country um, for the last several days. Even in Texas, I, I've got some, um, some color tube and Facebook friends in the community who are in Texas and they're saying it's colder there than it's been in forever. So, <coughs> excuse me, I think I'm catching a cold. Um, it's been really cold here. We've been down in the single digits at night with below zero wind chills. So um, I've been trying to take advantage of uh, the laundry and I'm trying to do it in the evenings before bed. So it kind of heats the house up a little bit, gives us some extra comfort, takes a little burden off the heating. I don't know how much it actually does, of course, because the dryer's vent vented outside, but hey, you never know. It's worth a shot. And then down underneath the drawers. And then just a little bit of shadow in front of the feet. Not too much. We don't have to go hog wild here. Just a little bit of shadow. It's not even necessary. I'm just nitpicking. <laughs> All right, so we have shadow in front of the bags. We have shadow under the desk. Let me bring that down just a little more. And then we're going to have a shadow back here, under the bed, in front of the little post, or the leg of the bed. Um, and I think what we might want to add, even though there's like not anything here to cast a shadow, maybe just a slight little bit of it here to slowly radiate back down into our main color simply because that's back against the same wall that the windows are on and it only makes sense that it would be not as light as the rest of the room. So let's just check to make sure we have everything where we want it. This little spot back here, I'm going to go ahead and darken it up with heavy pressure because it's going to be in shadow. I'm going to go ahead and darken up around these edges a little.
we will be coming back in with that clay rose here in just a second so that we can um or i'm sorry rosy beige this is clay rose all right i'm just darkening up the shadows now so that when i come back over with the lighter color it won't completely hide it. We'll still be able to see some of it there. So Happy New Year to everybody. I hope that everybody's had a good day. Started your new year off on the right foot. Hope nobody went out and partied a little bit too hard last night. I stayed in. My boyfriend unfortunately had to work kind of late so um, we didn't get to do much of anything, but that's okay. Um, we've pretty much given up the party life <laughs> at this point, so we're just as content to sit at home. He'll he'll play video games in all color, and that's that's the story of our lives. All right, so now I'm coming back in with the rosy beige, and I'm going to start back by the bed, and I'm going to use a little bit heavier pressure. Now I'm using like a medium pressure. I'm taking the color over where I've already been. Now this is a darker color. So we don't want to like do it like we did the wall and go in immediately with a really heavy pressure and just put it all down. The darker colors do tend to get a little streaky if you do that. So we are going to do this in two layers. We're going to do it in First a medium pressure layer, and then we'll go back in with a hard layer. So again, I'm just using medium pressure. Not too hard, but not soft either. I'm just putting the color down. Now initially, I had the idea to bring this color up into the curtains and use it on the flowers um, but I've had a couple people say that that wasn't that they didn't think it would look uh, very good so we will skip that for now I'm still not sure what color I'm going to put in there um, but I am going to leave the curtains themselves alone for right now um, we may end up coming back and doing the curtains in one of these colors either these colors that we're using in the floor or the colors that we used in the wall because I think being a major part of the room, it should tie in somehow. I should get some of these colors in there somewhere. The thing about coloring a picture when you don't have a predefined color palette at the start of it, is it's kind of something that's, that, you know, is like always evolving as you're coloring, as you're trying to figure out what colors you're going to make things how you want them to look when you're finished. And yes, this is looking a little streaky, but that's okay, because like you said, we're not done yet. We're gonna come back in and do it again. And then if need be, if it doesn't seem like it wants to blend out correctly, I'll come back in with a blender pencil. And my pencil, if you look real close, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not, but it's got like, like a bluish chunk in it, so it's leaving blue behind. Let me sharpen and see if I can't sharpen that out. It's so strange. Like I said, hopefully I'll be able to sharpen that out so that won't be all over the place. I won't let it ruin my day either way. It'll be okay. So now I'm just going down along the bottom.
sometimes I think when that happens, that you know, like when Prismacolor, the at the manufacturing facility, like when they're manu mixing their colors together, they do it in big vats and then they add it to the binder, which is pretty much the same for every single pencil in the set. And I wonder if somehow they don't get the colors mixed enough. And so that's why sometimes when you're coloring, you see like a streak of a totally different color. Like, the, like how this is looking down here. It almost looks like different colors like you can see right there how it's kind of turning gray even on me a little bit Okay, so now in this corner, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the heavier pressure. And when we go back with the heavy pressure, this is going to cover up any, um, any like streaks or anything that we left behind with our medium layer. And our medium layer is going to act like as our foundation for our color. And as I do this, you're going to see why we have to come back in again with the darker color to redo our shadow because our shadows are pretty well gone. So I'm using a heavy pressure. over the entire area and my pencil does have apparently a different color in it I'm looking at it right now and it appears that there are parts of it that have something like a blue mixed in like a streak interesting That part looks okay. I'll come over here and do this side. So far, so good. I wonder if you guys can see these little spots where the different color that's inside this pencil is coming out, like right here, how it's a little bit darker. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up or not. I'm not going to worry about it so much. It doesn't bother me a whole lot. If anything, it'll make it look more realistic to me. Sharpening again. I keep a very, very short point on my Prismacolors with this um, Tagal sharpener, and I find that doing it that way, they don't break nearly as often. And I can use heavier pressure without fear that my tip is going to snap off, which is always nice. So 
getting up closer now because I have a sharper point so I can get closer to the legs of all the furniture. Okay, so I'm just going to turn my pencil sideways so I can get down along this bottom edge. There we go. And hopefully since that's done, then the pencil won't grab the edge of the paper and pull up on it. Almost finished. Okay. I should have gotten my paintbrush. I don't know if it's where I can reach it. Let me see. Yes, it is. So we can use a paintbrush. Just brush away the extra instead of my hand, which I shouldn't have been doing. All right. So I just want to make sure I've got everything all nice and evenly colored covered so you're gonna see shine on mine because of the way the lights positioned yours should not look like that I really like this color for the floor so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in with my clay rose and this is the darker color of the two and I'm going to go back where those shadows initially were because as you can tell even though we went in really heavy you can just really you can't hardly even see that they're there anymore so I'm gonna go back and add those back in and at this point, we do need a, oops, to not go over the lines, we do need a heavier pressure. And we don't need it to be, you know, a whole lot darker than the rest of the floor. Just enough so that it's noticeable. Tricks the eye into believing that it's in shadow. So all those spaces where we went in with the shadow before, we're now going to come back over with a heavy pressure again, and we're going to go right over top of where we did the, the lighter color and just put it in there. And back over here between the bags. And this part in front of the bag. And then now to help blend that, because right over here, there's kind of a visible line. I'm just gonna blend that out with the lighter color again. Okay, so that takes care of the floor, and I think that looks pretty nice, to be honest. Let me find my racer so I can get this cleaned up a little. I went over the lines just a little bit right there where that um, bed post is. I'm not the neatest colorist. So I watch all these people on YouTube who color all the time. And they like never ever go outside the lines and it amuses me how they do it. I don't understand. It, it's just funny to me, I guess. I've got my cup of tea, so I'm going to take a drink here. Now, the next part of this, what I need to do is figure out where I'm going to incorporate some of these colors into the rest of the picture. And what colors I want to use in the rest of the picture to start with. So our main color for the wall, and I got out my little color wheel here, my Drips Rainbow Color Selector. And I started looking at it and comparing it to the different colors that are on this color wheel. And it looks like it's closest to the number one here. Let me see if I can move this back so you can see it. It's closer to this number one. So if you wanted to do a split complementary, I'd simply turn the color wheel. So we have our triangle here. 
And so our other two colors would be the number one here, which is like a periwinkle color, and the number one here, which is like a really light aqua. Um, and I do like those colors, and I think those colors would look nice, but I'm not so sure that's what I want to do. So I'll turn and pick another color scheme. We'll do the purple uh, tetrad, which would give us a minty green, um, a very, very like a lilac or lavender color, and then a, a bluer, like a really light blue. And I almost like that better. So I'm not really certain which way I want to go with this. Um, I do like the idea of incorporating some green in here, but I also like the blues because after all, um, it is it is um, a nautical scene, if nothing else. So I think the idea of putting some blues in here somewhere is definitely a good one. I think what I want to do though with this is I want to color um, some of the accessories that are in the room with these same two colors. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. And that's just gonna give us kind of a place to put um, some of these colors other than just the floor. So we, I want these to be like a metallic almost, or at least gray. The clock the same way, the clock face the same way. These are typically red and white, and I think that's a safety thing. So we'll leave that alone. The oars, of course, the oars are gonna be wooden, so we won't color those. Um, so we have the sheet on the bed that we could do in these colors. We have this little blanket here that we could do in these colors. And then this looks like from here to from here down to here. This is all one blanket. It's just got different designs on it. So this pillow and this it's like they they kind of match a little. All right, so what I want to do right now with this color, the only thing I think I want to do with it is I'm going to color this um this blanket with it. So I am going to do it in like a checkered pattern. Let's see. So then this one. Yep, that's what I want to do. Just counting to make sure I'm getting them in the right places. This is the rosy beige, and I'm doing the squares opposite each other, or the diamond shapes opposite each other. And this is just to bring in a little bit of the color that we used on the floor into the rest of the picture. I think this is a good place for it. I'm not shading this or anything. It is a blanket after all, so there's no need. You're not going to have a little shadow on every single square. So we're just I'm just coloring it in, just block coloring. All one flat color. And I think that what I might do is instead of using the other color that we had used today, the clay rose, which is the darker one, I may go back and get the putty beige, or not putty beige, the uh, seashell pink, and use it for the other side. Then this way we can tie our walls and our floors in together with one thing. And if we don't use those colors anymore for the rest of the piece, then that's, we don't have to. We've already got it all tied in together. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So then this one. And this one. Okay, so what I am going to do with this though, do you see this line like where the edge of the bed is, how the cover kind of like hangs over? I am going to kind of use this darker color just to go right along that line and pull it down a little bit. 
And that's going to help emphasize the fact that it's like laying over the edge of the bed right there. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do, actually I'm going to need to pull that color right here just a little bit as well. Because I'm trying to make it even. Now I'm going to take the seashell pink. And I'm going to come back with it in the other squares. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to color the alternate squares. I'm going to come back in with another layer just to be sure that we have everything colored, covered, covered, can't speak today. I think more tea may be in order. And then here we'll do the same thing with the, um, this is where we use the beige sienna as our darker color. So we'll use it to highlight the end of the bed where the blanket hold, hangs off the edge. Just like this. Not quite as defined there, but <clears throat> We'll make it work just like that so that it kind of looks like you can you can tell that there's like a difference in the fabric at the very least okay so now what i'm going to do is come back in with rosy beige and i'm going to go over each one of those squares again then i'm going to take my seashell pink and go over each one of those squares again and then we'll have this little blanket done small circles medium to heavy pressure just making sure we get all the little spaces covered and not leave any white paper behind. So I'm still thinking on this. I think I may skip the greens for the most part. And then just bring in some blues. I don't know. I can't decide. Because we're going to have um, grays and browns, which technically technically a gray and a brown can be neutral. So they don't have to necessarily be a part of your palette. So maybe some different blues and greens would look nice together. We could do that um, the split complementary. We could also do the tetrad. that had the light green and the two different blues like a seafoam green I think that would be cute maybe something to think on for the next um, the next video my cutting mat is sliding away from me like a light aqua Light aqua and periwinkle. We'll look at it again in a second and see if we can figure something out. Now I'm going over all the seashell pink squares again just to make sure I have everything covered evenly. And I think that looks nice because if we zoom it out just a little bit. What we needed was something to tie the floor and the wall together in the room and not make it look like it was completely separate of each other. And I think that does a pretty good job. So this is going to be, um, I believe we're going to color this red and white. I need to look and see which part's red and which part's white. I think that the actual raft itself is the white part and then the little stripes are red. 
Hmm. And we have the seashells here that we can also do in these colors. So I think we will do that while we have these colors out. Sorry guys, my throat's kind of froggy today, so I'm trying to drink my tea in hopes that I don't lose my voice. So let's go ahead and just do the seashells. I'm just using um, light pressure, lightish pressure of the seashell pink on the seashells. Let me zoom you back in. Move it over. And then just for a little bit of depth, we are going to use our beige sienna. We're just gonna go in right at the bottom of the shell. So about the bottom half or so darker down here. So down here you really want it to be nice and dark. Gradually lighten it up toward the center. And it's just going to make our seashell stand out a little more. It's kind of cute I think how huh? Erie drew the seashells to be the drawer pulls. I like that. And then back with the seashell pink. Just go over everything and mix it all up. Blend it all together. All right. I'm going to clean up a little. And it looks like I've gotten some of the floor into the desk. So I want to get that off there. Everything else appears to be in order, so that looks nice. All right, I'm still thinking on these flowers. We're gonna have to bring, if we go with the periwinkle, like if the color scheme, we do the split complementary, and I see, which one was it again? It was the brownish one I said was the closest. So that's the, we have the most of this color. So here, here's where we are, right? So if we do split complementary, we're gonna follow this orange triangle. And then we'd have this, which is like a light aqua green color, which would be another color we would want to incorporate quite a bit of. And then we'd also have this, which is um, actually kind of a, I don't know, let's get out our swatch chart and see what we can find that's close to that. So that's gonna be very shiny for you. So it's not blue violet lake. It's actually pretty close to that gray lavender. Is what it's looking like. So we'd have the gray lavender would be another color that we would use. And then this one would match to, let's see. Probably the light aqua is about as close as we're going to get. Then if we wanted to do, let's see, yeah. Then if we wanted to do um, the triad, which is the big um, triangle, that, that one, we would have our wall color, which we've already used. Then we would be using um, a lighter green and a lighter purple. So we would have something like Pale Sage out of the Prismacolor right here would be another main color that we would be using. And then we would have something like, let's see, what is that color? Is this the Gray Lavender one again? Yeah, something like the Gray Lavender. We may even be able to get away with, actually no, it would be the Gray Lavender. I personally like the one with the blues, so let's look at that one again. And that one was 
this one, the big green a square in the center. So there's our floor color up here. And then we would have, um, for following the green, we'd have the gray lavender here. And then we'd have the light blue here. And then we'd have like a cream color. But we're also going to have, we have to remember, we're going to have our browns and we're going to have our um, grays. So at this point, I think this is where I'm going to stop because I don't have any other colors of pencils pulled out. If you guys saw something that you really like while I was going through these colors with the color wheel, please point it out to me. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more research on this so that we can get down to business and we'll actually have at least our next few colors picked out. Um, around this is going to be gray or silver. It'll probably be a combination of grays made to look like silver. This will be the same. This will be in gray and silver. These will be brown, of course. They're the ores. Um, and then we're going to have a splash of green here for the plant. And then a little more brown here. But then for everything else, as far you know, anything goes. So if you guys saw anything you liked, please be sure to point it out. Um, I'll do a little bit more research of my own, too. But we are to the point now where we have the floor done, the wall done. Um, and we are just looking for alternatives, other colors, so blues, greens, purples. I don't know. Which ones did you guys like best? All right, so that ends part two of the color along. If you have um, any questions or anything or any comments that you want to leave, drop them downstairs in the comments box. If you like this channel, please subscribe and make sure you hit the notifications button so you'll know when the next part of this color along comes out. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you know other people who really enjoy color alongs like this so that they can join in um, and color their own picture along with us. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Happy New Year everyone and happy coloring.